All right, kids. I just finished um, baking some cake brownies as opposed to the fudgy kind because my family hadn't had them in centuries. I'm not saying they're better, but there's a time and a place. Okay. Um, here's what we did to start this off. We took a bunch of anions and we took a bunch of cations and we brought them together. And before we get into this, I want you to notice that the cation names are exactly as they are on the periodic table, right? Sodium, potassium, magnesium, copper. They're exactly what the metals are on the periodic table. Ammonium is a difference, but that's a different story. The anions, though, all have names different than what's on the periodic table. So that's an important point. Okay, we talked about how one clothes pin, clothes pin, <laughs> well, hang up one sock, right? One sock needs just the one clothes pin. However, if you have something bigger, like a shirt, then you need two clothes pins. And if you have something even bigger than that, like a sheet, then you may need three. And the same is true with uh, what we're doing here with ionic compounds, that if you have one positive charge, you just need one negative charge. If you have two negative charges, then it requires two positive charges to keep it up in the same way. Um, and if you have three negative charges, you need three positive to hold it up and vice versa. If you had three positives, then you would three negatives. All right, and then we found formulas for these things. And what we came up with was some rules and the rules were keep it simple or elegant as they used to say at Ohio State. Reflect the name or the periodic table basically. So it's always in the order of metal plus non-metal. So sodium chloride is the metal uh, sodium plus the non-metal chlorine as the anion chloride. And that's reflective of the periodic table as well, where the metals are on the left and the non-metals on the right. So we use the lower right corner for the number of atoms. Uh, parentheses are helpful in grouping positives and negatives. And charge is redundant because metals are always positive and non-metals are always negative. So here we go. Naming compounds. There's two types of compounds, both ionic and covalent. We talked about that on the first day of school. We talked about it some uh, recently in the last unit with uh, the periodic table. And what we're going to concentrate here is mostly ionic compound naming because that's sort of the most complex and uh, accurate. Covalent has uh, some uses that we'll get into as well. So there's binary ionic and there's polyatomic ionic. I won't ask you to define those, but the difference being binary has a metal and a non-metal only two elements and polyatomic would have more than two elements. So notice binary doesn't mean two atoms, just two elements. So only calcium and bromine are represented here, whereas here sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen are represented. All right, covalent is a CH bond. Usually those are organic and then Okay, so when you join ions, you have to know what the charge is, and this is because the total charge has to be zero when you're done with ionic bonding. So metals will lose electrons, become cations, which have a positive charge, and then there's some rules here. And then nonmetals will gain electrons. Uh, they fight. Remember, nonmetals like fighting. So they like to get those electrons. Anions will have a negative charge is what they become. They're never wild. There's never any question what's happening with anions. Halogens are always minus one. The oxygen group is always minus two. The nitrogen group is always minus three. That's not true for metals. Now, metals, if you have a wild card in UNO, the first thing you say is, what's the charge? Or what's the color? <laughs> You'd say, what's the color? If you use any of these metals, then you would say, what's the charge? The only exceptions are silver and zinc which we saw here. Zinc is always plus two, and silver is always plus one. So anyway, all right, so here's what that last slide boils down to. Everything in group one is a plus one charge, and everything in group two has a plus two charge. The three elements among the rest of the metals that have any significant repetitive value are silver is always plus one, zinc is always plus two, and aluminum is always plus three. The halogens are always minus one charge. The oxygen group is always minus two charge, and the nitrogen group is always minus three charge. This stops here because that's where the metal, uh, non-metal line ends up, right? The line goes this way. So uh, our 
arsenic is not in there. PO should also not be colored in, but this was done a long time ago, and I don't feel like doing it again, kids. So this should all make sense, right? All these elements are one electron away from falling back into the noble gases. So lithium loses one electron to become like helium, and sodium loses one electron to become like neon, and so forth down the row. That's why they're all plus one. These are all plus two for the same reason. Calcium wants to lose two electrons to become like argon. Magnesium wants to lose two electrons to become like neon. On the reverse side, all of these halogens want to gain one electron to become like the noble gas that they're closest to. So that's why they have a minus one charge. The oxygen group wants to gain two electrons to become like the noble gas they're closest to. That's why it's negative two. And then nitrogen, phosphorus, and arsenic all want to be minus three. Then aluminum would want to lose its three valence electrons. Zinc and R, uh, silver, if you look at their electron configuration, they both have uh, full shells, except for the, in zinc's case, it's the four. And in silver's case, it's the five, have just uh, one electron in the five and two electrons in the four. So they lose those. Anyway. Everything else is telling you the charge, and that's what the Roman's going to try to tell you. The Roman tries to tell you the charge. And then basis, basics of compounds is that, like we talked about, this lower right-hand corner is what number means how many atoms are involved. So there's two hydrogen for every oxygen. In this calcium chloride, there's two chlorines, right? Two chlorides for every calcium. All right, so here are some examples of binary uh, only using two elements, so potassium and oxygen. If we go back to our charge thing here, potassium's right here, has a plus one charge, and oxygen's right here, has a minus two charge. So potassium has the plus one, and oxygen has the minus two. And what we want is that the charges should equal zero. Currently, plus one and minus two equals negative one, so we need more plus ones, so we're going to need another potassium plus one, plus one, minus two, now that equals zero. So that's good. So it's K2O. That would be the formula for potassium and oxygen. The name is the metal name plus the non-metal plus I. So the metal's name is potassium, and the non-metal's name is oxide. All right, so barium and chlorine. So we're going to go back here. Barium is right here, which is a plus two charge. Chlorine is right here, and it's a minus one charge. So we got barium with a plus two, and chlorine with a minus one. Plus two minus one is still plus one, so that's not the zero we're looking for. We need another chlorine. And now plus two minus one minus one equals zero. And that's BaCl2, and we call that barium, which is the name of the metal and then chloride, which is the name of the non-metal with an IDE ending. All right, aluminum plus nitrogen, we're going back here. Aluminum is here with the plus three, and nitrogen is here with the minus three. So, Al plus three, and N minus three. Three plus, minus three equals zero, so we're good. So it's just an Aln would call that aluminum, just the name of the metal, and nitro aluminum nitride. All right, so there's that. Um, if we erase all this, let's erase all that, and then do some more. So what if we had iron two? plus sulfur. So again, then Roman has to be telling us to charge for iron. So iron 2 means it's Fe plus 2. If you look back here, iron is one of these that does not have a known charge, so it would have to be told in the Roman numerals or given uh, the anion. So we'll figure that out in a second. Sulfur, if we go back here, is minus 2. It's right there. So S minus 2 
plus two minus two equals zero, so we just need one of each, so it's FES. And if you want to look at that visually, like we were doing with the puzzle pieces, so iron has the two pluses and sulfur has the two minuses. All right, so here is the one that drives everyone nuts. Um, so aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide or oxygen. So aluminum is the plus three and the oxygen is minus two. So a lot of people kind of pick up that aluminum with its plus three and oxygen with minus two. We're looking at a lowest common denominator thing. But if you're going to do this out of the gate, plus three and a minus two equals a plus one, which is not zero. And since we're positive, we need more negatives. So we put another negative up there. And now we got plus three, minus two, minus two is negative one. So now we have too many negatives, so we need more positives, so we got to add another aluminum. Now we're plus three, plus three is six, minus two is four, minus two is a total of two, so it's not zero yet. We need yet one more oxygen, and now that's plus three, plus three is six, minus two, minus two, minus two is zero. So the formula would be Al2O3, because there's two aluminums and three oxygens. And if you're going to look at that from a puzzle piece perspective, right? So aluminum has its three pluses. And then oxygen comes with its two minuses. That's not enough. So you grab another oxygen with its two minuses. And then that's too many. So you need another aluminum with its three pluses. And now that's too many, so you need another oxygen. Thanks, computer. And you need another oxygen. It's two minuses. There you go. And then everything's equal. So there's two aluminums and three oxygens. All right. I think that sums up what happened today. I hope that's helpful. And we'll get into it some more tomorrow.